beauty 10 times? Beauty, do I have to do it quickly? Beauty, 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 beauty. I mean, if you say anything 10 times, it sounds like, what? <laughs> but then in my mind, I'm thinking B-E-A-U, which is beau in French, means beautiful. I want to see what that, uh, the origin of that is. It just goes back to Latin, I guess, meaning fine. If you have the Anglo-Saxon words, they generally are very blunt, simple, hard-hitting words. You can just rattle them off the top of your head and you know they came from that kick, kill, bite, stab, run, those words. But the longer words, the words that have more to them, mellifluous, that's not Anglo-Saxon. I'm 68. I'm a writer and I'm looking always for things to write about. I realize that I should take advantage of this state of life I'm in, this 68-year-oldness. And so I started thinking about what that meant and part of that was looking back. And sometimes it hurts. It's hard to look at some of these things straight in the eye. Tennessee Williams said the only sin is deliberate cruelty. And I remember being with some guys in prep school and bullying some kid just out of wanting to be on the side of the people that weren't being bullied, you know? Pure what? Pure opportunism, pure something or other, I don't know. How can you go through life not hurting someone? I mean, that presupposes if you have no regrets that you've never hurt anybody. And of course you've hurt somebody. Everybody's hurt somebody, sometimes inadvertently, but sometimes on purpose. And then to say you don't regret that? What, what are you talking about? <music> regret is centered in the idea that you can't change it. To feel sorrow or remorse, those are two really good words, sorrow, you know. Not sadness, but sorrow, which is just a, a really lovely, nuanced word, you know. I suppose you could say it, I really regret killing him, but there's something weird about that. Regret seems to me to be more of a motion that deals with things that we all could understand and relate to. I regret saying those things to her. I regret humiliating her in that situation. I could take an obvious example and I'll look at my marriage, which broke up, and you know, you look back and you think, oh, God, I wish I'd done this or I should have done this, but it's gone and the marriage is over and I often wish it weren't. You see couples, older couples, by 50s, 60s, 70s, who are doing all these things together, usually I see it in small matters like, um, oh, I don't know, they'll go into a store or something and they'll have this like dialogue, this kind of like shorthand about what that one person needs to buy. It's very compressed because they've been living together for 30 or 40 years. Another friend gets really bothered, this woman who's by herself when she sees couples holding hands in the park or on the street. And she said, I went to a dry cleaner and this woman came in before me, she had like six or seven shirts, male, men's shirts, obviously her husband's shirts. And she gave them, and she said, that, that just really got me, she said, because I don't have any shirts, men's shirts to take to the dry cleaner. So those moments like that are really, really pointed and, and they can really get to you like that. I know, I know. It's a gorgeous day here in New Orleans today. It's just beautiful. Okay, bye-bye. Many of us go to bed alone. Once in a while I'll think about that community. At heart everybody is just looking for love, looking for that companionship, that closeness, and not getting it. And then going to work the next day, just being themselves and doing their job, carrying a small ache in them. You know, if the internet weren't here, I don't know, what would I be going down to playing bingo? You know, Bess, that was a hell of a bingo game you played. Would you like to go for some chocolate? I said, would you like to go for some chocolate? <laughs>
it's such a strange thing, this internet dating. I, I mean, it is so counterintuitive and everything about it, it feels like that you're like this, like the circuits have been realigned and, and rewired. Once this website <laughs> matched me, according to her criterion and mine, with a woman whose profile picture was her holding an AK-47, like this. I sent it to my nephew, who's like 30, and he said, well, Rich, this girl sure looks like she knows how to party. <laughs> but also I'll hear them down here in Louisiana, never saw this in New York, they would say, you know, must be non-smoker, um, like walks, uh, be friendly to dogs, and know how to use a tractor. <laughs> Once, or a backhoe, be able to use a backhoe. I mean, but you know, like, like Shakespeare and must be able to use me. Nope, I can't, I can't. I could lie, but then it could be ugly if she said, you know, take, Rich, take that backhoe and clear the North 40 for me, will you? And then we'll go out and see a movie. There's a great quote by Tolstoy and he says, old age is the most unexpected thing that can happen to a man. And it's true, at one point you go, what? <laughs> well, wait a minute, I wasn't expect, I mean I, and Tolstoy's like, told you. As you approach that death and dying and aging, you just take a deep breath and you look around and you say to yourself, this is the one time, one chance I've had. Did I, did I screw it up? And if so, how much? How many people did I hurt? Did I help people? You know, what's the balance sheet going to be like? I'm not Mother Teresa. I'm not a soup kitchen kind of guy, but I, but I am. I know each person can do good deeds in their own way. So I do, I am more conscious of it, whether or not I'm doing anything radically different, I don't know, but I, I, I would like to think so. In my own small way, in my own very narrow life and experience, you know, as I'm growing older, I'm trying to bear witness to that and, and look at it fearlessly and address it in a way that other people can say, yes, I, I felt that too. I am feeling that. I am afraid. I'm worried. I'm trying to make it in such a way that, that I don't know, entertaining, I suppose, or, or beyond just whining. I mean, let's say, beautiful whining. <laughs> Bad weather brings out the lyrical in Paris and in The Visitor, too. It summons up feelings of regret, loss, sadness, and in the case of the first pangs of winter, intimations of mortality. The stuff of poetry, and of keen memories. The soul aches in a kind of unappeasable ecstasy of melancholy. Anyone who has not passed a chill rainy day in Paris will have an incomplete vision of the city and of him or herself in it. So I was trying to figure out what that ache is when I go I don't, uh, to Paris and I guess elsewhere too where, where there's this, this melancholy that won't go away, that can't be satisfied. So I tried to capture that in this phrase, um, unappeasable ecstasy of melancholy, because it's melancholy, but there's like something, there's an ecstasy to it, you know, like St. Teresa getting the arrows in her. It's this pain, but it's ecstatic too, and it's unappeasable because you can't get rid of it. So anyway, I, whether that worked or not, who the hell knows, but that's the best I could do. <laughs> Trying to write a sentence that's a beautiful lyrical sentence but also tells the truth about what you're experiencing, I don't think you can do more. Do I think I make as much of a contribution as, as a doctor saving lives? I don't know. How many people have been saved by books? Quite a few. You know? Me and I know lots of others. 
lots of other lonely kids have gone to libraries and they've discovered other worlds where they were welcomed and could inhabit and could escape to and not only that, they found answers to things and people still find, an find answers to things they can't find anywhere else. No, I'm not growing wheat for the poor. Art doesn't do that and art doesn't build bridges and art doesn't put bandages on arms, but art helps you understand life who you are, what it means to be human, and how other people suffer and express joy. And also what I think it does is to show that there is beauty in us and the best we can be, and we need that. I don't have regrets in choosing to do this. No, I don't. <laughs> There's one area that I don't have regrets. No, 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 I don't. And. Um, I tell you, that's one thing, uh, you know, after when you get to be 68 and you look back and you go, I spent my entire life doing this. Yeah, I did. You know? And, um, and I would do it again, hopefully better. <laughs>